to me a lot. <laughs> I am in a I am in a band. I do the, I keep I have my own mic stand. It's kind of set for me. So um, in the program it says I'm a housewife on the edge, and my program is or my story is really more about things are just not really what they appear to be, which is kind of up in the air very loosely. So that is uh, where we're going to start. So I am. A 49 year old woman. I've lived in Lincoln almost my whole life. I've been married for 26 years. I have two beautiful poised children, a 15 year old daughter and a 12 year old daughter. Um, let's see, so I have been married for 26 years to the same person. He is, uh, so I have a husband, I have a house, I've got two cats and a doggy. And then in the basement, I have a full rock line of uh, amplifiers bass guitar, there are two drum sets, um, and I'm in a rock band, which is really funny. I've been in a rock band for 27 years. I've had three bands, three vans, three drummers. I have had, I probably put out, let me think, seven records, a couple singles, I've been on five labels, um, two major labels. So I have a wealth of experience. I've also toured in a rock band all across the lower 48. So I've been down the interstates and into the bars. Well, this one gentleman, his name is Tim McNaman. He's in Omaha, and he writes for um, The Reader. He is he's interested in writing about rock bands. So I say, I am a rock band, I'm trying to get press, all that good stuff. He contacted our band. Uh, Mercy Rule and said, oh, I want to go, to go on tour with you guys, because it always sounds so amazing to be on tour. Yeah. I said, sure, come on over. <laughs> I'll take you on tour with us. We had a show scheduled in Des Moines, Iowa. I think you're familiar with Des Moines, Iowa. It's on the interstates two hours from here. <laughs> it's, it's half a tank of gas. We did a Chevy Beauville van at that time. Half a tank of gas would get me from here to there. So I have it all timed out. I drive, I'm the driver. Um, so we picked good friend Tim up in the band van and the photographer, because they're gonna do this wonderful story about living on the edge. Yeah. The tour, so cool. So in my band, I have three people. I'm a three-piece band. It's me, my husband, who plays guitar. I have a drummer. We also have a sound man who comes with us. Because concurrent to the 27 years that I've been in a band, um, indie rock happened, Nirvana happened, the overthrow of all records, the internet. There's kind of an interesting, turbulent time. Kind of when we started playing music, people a little more into Eric Clapton and kind of more controlled and genteel sound. And I play loud, loud rock music. It's independent, uh, we write it all ourselves. Um, you know, I, I'm sure you probably heard a song or two, so I'm carrying you. Uh, my big hit is called I Love the Summer, when it's hot, hot, hot. So anyway, we are, there's four of us already, there's two of them. I have two front seats, I have a back seat that folds down into a bed just in case you have to sleep in the van for whatever reason, and then a loft in the back of the van. It's a full-size futon, so there's two, two, and two guys are, they're, you know, have to lay down for two hours to the van. So we're driving down the interstate, it's, um, I pick them up in Omaha, so now Des Moines is exactly, it's about, mm, it's about 110 miles. It's a little more than an hour and a half the way I personally drive. <laughs> so we're going down the interstate, driving along. They want to stop. They want to stop going to the bathroom. And I don't really allow that. <laughs> and I'll tell you why. There's a really good reason why that does not occur in a rock band. Because the rock van, I've had three of them. You have to remember the first part of the story, is a very iffy kind of ecosystem. You turn that thing off, I'm not sure it's going to come back on. There is no guarantee that it, we knew it's, it's up. And, and that's something we've learned over time. I can tell you all the places we've, get, we've got stuck in. There was Nashville. There was the guy we met 
who wanted to patent his art form of making Elvis Presley busts through the head out of Bondo, which is an auto repair product. <laughs> so you can meet a lot of fun people when the van doesn't just start. But uh, so anyway, we pick him up in Omaha. Now I'm driving down the road. We're not stopping to go to the bathroom. You can hold it for 80 miles, for God's sakes. Now, apparently it was torture. But anyway, so we get to Des Moines. We drive up to the wonderful venue. Uh, it's called Harry Mary's. It's a true story, Harry Mary's. And um, we had developed kind of a following at Harry Mary's. Uh, they got out, of course, used the fabulous toilets. <coughs> the men's room, especially at all bars in the lower 48, are beautiful. <laughs> Most of the time, we try to get there early, and the guys in the band will try to use the ladies' room, because the men's room's, oh yeah. So anyway, we get there. Um, we've invited some friends of ours to come also. To, they're going to come play with us. They're called Sideshow. We're going to open. We're going to do this wonderful thing. And uh, so we've got, they're there. We unload into the place. It's about 5 o'clock in the afternoon. We don't go on until about midnight. So we have got a lot of time to kill. So we decide, kind of just for fun, we're going to go and we're going to go have supper together. We often did that as a band. We'd go have supper. It was a very family-oriented kind of group. Instead of drink until midnight and go on in a drunken stupor, we really didn't drink. We didn't do drugs, we didn't drink. We sort of stared straight ahead and then got up and performed. So that was our excitement. But anyway, tonight we went down. Uh, Harry Mary's is in Des Moines. It's by the river. Um, so it's kind of an old markety kind of area like this. They had a spaghetti works. So we thought, it's cheap, spaghetti, who doesn't like that? We all eat together. The band that's opening for us, all of us, and then we trot back to Harry Mary's, and we start feeling kind of sick. <laughs> and everybody actually is now feeling very sick. We have actually got food poisoning. And um, so we're at Harry Mary's, we're, you know, we're sitting around and you can't really feel happy, Joe, you can't really tell funny stories, you have food poisoning. So I'm not sure who puked first, but somebody did, somebody did somewhere. Our opening band played, we played, I played with a, um, a trash can next to me because I was like, I'm, just, I'm pretty sure I'm going to puke, but I didn't. So poor Tim and his photographer have, you know, they have food poisoning. Um, it's disorienting. Their, their bladders hurt because of obviously I've hurt them. And so we finally get done, and then we load. We get all back into the van. We put everything back. We put the guys up on the front, the two in here, and I'm driving. And we start home, and our friends sideshow their van. The radiator blows. It's just spewing of all this wonderful steam. So we go to the truck stop, the all-night truck stop. We're very good at this because obviously I've had all these vans and they haven't started. I've become an expert at going, oh, is that the starter? I think that might be this. That might be the carburetor. I know it all by this time. So we carried a big toolbox with us, big nice red toolbox. We have a jack that would pick up 2,000 pounds. It was funny. Anyway, so we, we got their van all, all fixed up. We got the radiator back going. Everybody's going back down the road. It's probably, oh, it's 4 o'clock in the morning now. I don't think Tim and his photographer have slept at all. Um, we come and we drive him back to his home in Omaha. And in a parting gift, my husband rolls down the window and throws up <laughs> in his lawn, <laughs> touring. <laughs> Yay! He still talks to us, and he, you know, he did actually. He, we got the the front cover of the reader uh, from the story. He told this lovely story, but he did highlight that. Um, I almost killed him, and his bladder, and I poisoned him, and. Of course, the puking in the night. So things are not as they seem. That is my story. <laughs>